Australia Junior. Three, two, one. Ready or not, here I come. Shh, Pia, Costa will find us if you wriggle around. Shush yourself, Romeo. They're not behind the recycling bin and they're not under the trampoline. Aha, I found you. My Gardening Australia Junior crew is hiding behind this tree hollow. Oh, sorry, I couldn't hold the sneeze in. Wow, this is such an impressive specimen you have in your backyard. Most tree hollows are nowhere near this big. It's just a hole in a tree trunk. It's more than just a hole. This would be a mansion for a possum, owl or glider. It's a bit like a cubby house. Love it. Nature's cubby. How does a tree get like this anyway? How do tree hollows form? That is such a good question. And I reckon we should go for a walk through the National Park next door to find the answer. I'll lead the way. There's a track I ride my bike along sometimes. Perfect. Race ya. Whoa. These trees look old. Psst. Here, is Costa sprinkling crumbs along the track so we don't get lost? I don't think so. It looks more like dirt. It's my compost. It's made from things like plants, food scraps, and even paper that turns into a mixture to help the garden grow. Wow! A sprinkle here and a sprinkle there makes the real world disappear. All it touches will grow tall, and you will seem so very small. Whoa! I think it's working. Look at that grass shooting up. It's not just the grass. It's the Banksia trees. The tops of them are touching the sky. <gasps> Was that a monster kookaburra? <laughs> <laughs> Why is everything so humongously humongous? Everything except for us. It's my compost. It's magic. It makes everything enormous. But never fear, it wears off after a few minutes. I thought it would be handy to sprinkle around the bush so we can get a close-up look at some tree hollows. Cool. Why do we need a close-up look? The cubby in Romeo's backyard was easy to see. Like I said, that was way bigger than most tree hollows. We're standing in front of one right now that you probably wouldn't even notice if my compost hadn't supersized it. Oh, it looks like a cave. Hello in there. Oh, bats! Hang on, that bat wasn't giant. Maybe your compost missed it. Actually, that was a micro bat. In a regular size world, it's smaller than your pinky finger. And this tree hollow isn't much bigger. It looks a bit black around the edges. Good spotting. I reckon this hollow was caused by a small fire. <gasps> there was a fire in this bush. Luckily, the firefighters put it out before it spread. That is lucky. Too right. Even though a blaze burnt this hole in the tree and created a home for the microbat, bushfires are usually bad news. They can totally destroy entire trees as well as some really old hollows. How old? It can take a hundred years or more for tree hollows to form, especially the bigger ones. A hundred years? That's way older than our grandparents. But why does it take so long? I'm getting to that. Pets aren't allowed in national parks, Costa. I'm not calling my dog. I'm calling my mate, Terry. Whoa! Is your mate an enormous butterfly? I don't think he's a butterfly because his wings are see-through. Oh, yeah. His body looks more like an enormous ant. Terry is terrifying. He's a termite. I didn't know termites could fly. The worker termites can't, but the future kings and queens can. Ooh, Terry, nice to meet you, Your Royal Highness. Should we bow? <laughs> no need for that. Terry's going to take us to meet some of his mates. Let's climb onto his body. Terry has a shell. And it's a bit bumpy. Nestle your butt into one of his ridges. They're like seats. OK, we're ready. Terry, time for takeoff. <laughs> Hello down there. <laughs> 
So this is what the bush looks like to an insect. The tree trunks are the size of skyscrapers. Most of them are solid in the middle, but Terry and his mates are renovating the one up ahead. Whoa! There are hundreds of Terry's buddies in that tree. Maybe even thousands. It's a termite takeover. Let's land and say g'day. Hi, everyone. Terry dropped us off to check out your work. They don't seem to be doing much work. Yeah, they're all eating. That is their work. They enter the tree from underground, then they slowly but surely munch passages and tunnels through the trunk and branches. Let's follow them inside. Whoa! This is a long tunnel. The termites' mouths are pretty small. It's going to take them a while to eat through a whole entire tree. Exactly. But termites can eat and eat and eat until their strong jaws and sharp teeth gnaw a tree hollow. But you said it can take hundreds of years to make a tree hollow. Can these termites chew non-stop for that long? <laughs> no way. They'll pass the work on to new termites, other bugs, even hungry fungi. Mushrooms? Mushies are one type of fungi. But there's also a strange type of fungi growing outside. Come out and have a look. That white powdery stuff in the bark? Yep. It slowly rots the tree. So slowly, you don't even notice. Until eventually the tree wilts and a crack or hole appears in the branches or trunk. I don't want to sit here for a hundred years watching that fungi eat the tree. Yeah, boring. Look out! Duck! Whoa! Phew, that was close. The weather helps too. Strong wind and even lightning strikes can snap branches and crack trees to create hollows inside. Bad weather. No, not bad. We want nature to help make tree hollows. They're super important shelter for so much of our native wildlife. Hello, Cocky. Like that fella. Was it just me, or is that cockatoo not so big? Maybe it was a micro cockatoo? No such thing. It's the magic compost wearing off. Oh, yeah. Terry is shrinking. He's friends, too. Bye, Termos. Good luck with your hollow. <gasps> it feels like we're getting taller. No, the trees are getting shorter. Almost done. <sighs> that feels better. We should get home. Yeah, we've got a game of hide-and-seek to finish. Make sure Terry doesn't hitch a ride on your shoes. Why? You don't want termites in your house. They can eat through buildings as well as trees. Stay away from my bedroom. I have a sign on the door. Keep out, especially Terry. <laughs> <laughs> you know how I said tree hollows are super important habitat for wildlife? Yeah. One of the reasons is because some animals can't make nests themselves. They depend on nature to do it for them. Should we go back to the national park and tell Terry to work harder? <laughs> no, but we can help. I don't think my teeth are strong enough to chew a hole into a tree. We don't need to do that either. But what we can do is put nest boxes in trees. I'm not allowed to use hammers and nails. Or cutting tools like saws. They're dangerous. Of course, building a nest box is definitely something you need a grown-up to take the lead on. But just so you know, nest boxes are best made from hardwood and you can paint them so they don't rot quickly. Or get eaten by hungry fungi. Yep, and they should have an opening for animals or birds to easily get in and out. Microbats only need a little gap. That's right, but possums need a bigger hole. You should also put nest boxes in safe spots away from lots of people or cars and attach them to trees at different heights. Think about what type of animal might be using it and whether they can crawl or climb or fly. That's it. Let's put nest boxes on every tree in the whole wide world. That would take a lot longer than a hundred years. <laughs> <laughs> I will not be sharing my magic compost recipe. Please do not sprinkle any compost, magic or not, on anything except soil. In fact, don't sprinkle compost anywhere without the help of a grown-up. You never know what magic might happen.
If you like the Gardening Australia Junior podcast, make sure you check out the TV show too. You'll find us on ABC iView.